and stakeholders drum support for Vice President Yemi Osibajo. And as the world celebrates another International Women's Day, we discuss breaking the bias women experience in their lives. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Kuhn. In February of 2022, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, dis denied plans to declare his presidential ambition ahead of the 2023 general elections. However, this hasn't stopped. Several groups have from uh, been drumming support for the pastor turned politician. Some of the groups have also endorsed him, saying he has met the criteria needed to create a new Nigeria. We speak uh, to one of such groups, United Citizens Unite. Well, it is a group that claims to be nonpartisan and believes that the vice president is the best man for the job. Violet Anirobi is a member of Citizens Unite and she joins us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, Violet. Thank you, Miriam. It's, Good to be here. it's interesting to see that young people are throwing their weight. Normally, I would see uh, a much older person trying to <laughs> drum support for a candidate. But tell us why Citizens Unite. Uh, why, you, why you're choosing the vice president. I mean, this is a man that has not necessarily come out to say he wants to run for the office, so why him? Yeah, um, I will answer that question by saying, how did it get here where you're asking me why him? Because why not him? He's the best candidate, actually. As Citizens United, our core values that meritocracy, zero tolerance for corruption, non-partisan, so all these things, inclusivity, Tribalized and non biased, and we feel that the vice president, Professor Yemi Ushibajo, encapsulates all of these core values. That's why, as Citizens United, we're endorsing him and we are clamoring that he contests for the presidential election in 2023 because we believe presently he's the best candidate and the best option Nigeria has to move us from where we are to where we are supposed to be as a nation and as a people. Interesting. Um, let's talk about the makeup of your group before we talk about the vice president. There's a lot to unpack. Um, this group is non-partisan, but then you are advocating for um, a man who is a member already of a political party, who is a sitting vice president. Yes. Um, so you chose to um, endorse a person who is a member of a political party. Does that resonate with all the people who are in your group? Because you're non-partisan, meaning that all your members may belong to different political parties. So how does that work? No, we are all non-partisan. Members of Citizens United, the ESCOs, the core ESCOs of Citizens United were non-partisan. We came together, we looked at all the contestants, all the people that are coming up everywhere, and we said, okay, who is the best person for Nigeria? Who can help us take us to the next level? I just finished my master's, in, my master's degree from Coventry University, and a lot of my course mates don't want to come back to Nigeria. They rather do different things over there than come back home. And I came back because I believe that 2023 is either a do or die affair for Nigeria. We either get it right or we fail completely. And so I'm here now to ensure that we get it right in 2023. And that's what brought all of us together. We have same spirit, we have same goal, and we want Nigeria to make it beyond 2023. That's mm -hmm. why we are endorsing the vice what president. Are those, what are those characteristics that the vice president has displayed or could have displayed that would have made you think that he's the man for this job? I mean, I'm sure you don't have to educate me as to his precedence, but what made you choose him over many other people who may have or may not be interested in this job? Um, number one is meritocracy. Um, his lifestyle, he exemplifies it. Um, this in is what someone, ways? This is someone who, was, um, who became a lawyer in 1981, and then he spent 10 years before he became a, a, a professor. He was a lecturer 10 years before he became a professor, and then he became a son. He worked, he worked under um, Bola Ajibola, 
So who was his, um, he was a legal advisor to Bola Ajibola. He was the one that discovered him. And then afterwards, he was also discovered and became the Attorney General of Lagos State. So this is someone who has climbed in different phases of his life. He has become like a master, like a maestro of everything. He was a lecturer. He rose to become a professor. And then he was... There are um, many professors in the country. There are many people who came yeah, from grass to Not many grace. people are professors, even after There are many become, professors in Nigeria. No, but many not many people notable become ones. professors in law after they are lecturers mm -hmm. so not many people do that and so, then he became so does Nigeria need a law professor to no, lead I'm us about, is that the problem that Nigeria has no I'm has talking now? about meritocracy I said okay. he exemplifies it okay so this is someone if you check his lifestyle over the years so this is what he has become he was a lawyer for ten, he was a lecturer for 10 years before, before he became a professor and then he was a lawyer for years before he became a son and now he's the vice president and we are saying okay if this person has exemplified all of this in Nigeria we want a situation where a nobody becomes a somebody without knowing any anybody just because you are worth it and because you know your onions and then you merit that position you're giving it you're giving it not because you know somebody so that is in nigeria we envision and also zero tolerance for corruption that's also one of our core values hmm. um let's look at um the president um i mean the vice president he's the vice president he's yes. the vice president to a president who's leading us now um, how well do you think the, the administration he's part of has done? And why should we take someone from that administration to come back in 2023? Okay, um, when you look at the vice president, I would like to go back. Let's go back in time to 2017 when he had 51 days um, as the acting president. You could see that the country made progress and then there were a lot of things that happened. He, had, he fired the then director general of the state security service. So there were a lot of movements. Um, Naira crash. So a lot of people, my friends, my colleagues, all of us are saying, if someone can do such, go through such, um, what's it called, progress within 51 days, how well do you think he will do in four, four years? Well, but he's still part of this government. Why have we not been able to see all of that progress in the two tenures that they are running? Why should we, again, this, I, I asked you a question that you skipped. Yeah. How well has this administration done? Because, of course, we're going to have to judge this administration to be able to say, let's pull out somebody from this administration to be president in 2023. So I want your honest opinion, because my job here is to ask the question. Yeah. So tell me what you think, this how well this administration has fed and why I, you, and anybody else who's watching should want to give the vice president a ticket. Okay, this administration has done very well when it comes to infrastructure, um, train, um, train road transport he has done extremely well when it comes to corruption he has reduced it dramatically so when he, yes he has and so when you look at all the antecedents from this this um, present administration you only need I wonder tell what, you where yeah. we are in the corruption index I mean I'm talking about the latest one um, we're nowhere close to what you're talking about so I'm, I'm trying to understand where you got your statistics from oh presently my statistics and how are you measuring it Presently, what we do is that most of the present, um, what's it called, um, I am ministers and those in authority, they don't still, corruption is not done blatantly as it used to in the present, in the previous administration. So everyone is afraid, yes, presently, everyone is afraid of what will happen to them if they are being caught, if your hand is caught in the pie. So that is where we have, we are, we've instilled the fear of corruption. So even if some people, of course, Nigerians, not most Nigerians are technically corrupt. So even if some people are corrupt, but they don't want their hands to be caught in the pie, because if this administration catches your hands in the pie, of course you go, you you be. How well have how many people has this administration tried and really sent to jail in terms of corruption? We've seen a lot of people who have corruption cases still hanging on their heads, but the moment they move to the APC, those cases have gone cold. Is that? how the corruption cases have been reduced to its minimum, almost non-existence in your word? Oh, no. The corruption... Okay. One thing most people need to understand is that Nigeria practices... Um, Nigeria is a federal republic, and then we practice president, presidential system of government. And then in presidential system of government, there's the legislative arm, and then there's the judiciary arm, there's the, there's, there's the executive arm. So the judiciary arm, we have a lot... is, is unfortunate 
to say, but we have, that is where we have most of the problem, the, the judiciary and the legislative arm of the government of Nigeria. That's where we have most of the problem. The, the, the judges are very corrupt. The, legislat the legislators are very corrupt. So most people um, tend to think that um, if you read through the Nigerian constitution, the president can just wave a magic How wand. How independent do you think the then, arms, other arms of government, other than the executive are in Nigeria? How independent do you think they are? under this administration or any other administration? The legislative arm is very independent. And the judicial? And so, yes, they are independent. That's why you see, um, that's why you see some cases. And then when some judges have received, of course, you know, some things behind closed doors, they close those cases. And then the federal government is also pursuing those cases, but the ju judge says it's adjourned until next year. So you're next telling year. me that the Buhari administration is saintly, but the National Assembly and the judiciary is corrupt. I am not saying, I'm saying, I'm not saying it is saintly. I am saying that the problem with Nigeria, which most people need to understand, is the legislative arm of government and the judiciary arm of government. So those two, once we've been able to deal with those two pillars, we'll be able to move Nigeria to the next level. Most times, it's not ever necessarily that the executive arm of government is actually the legislators. You put bills in place and then they, they disapprove it. They just come there, they sit there every time, they collect during the COVID... COVID um the members of the National Assembly, 80% of them are members of the President's party. Why do you think they would want to work against the President or the, the executive? Because it's individual. You've noticed Absolutely. most times that you've noticed most times that what the legislators do, they fight for their personal pockets. Most, most importantly, a typical example was during the COVID lockdown. So you had um, a lot of people were saying Nigerians needed money, Nigerians were um, suffering because of the lockdown. And then what the legislators were thinking of was getting themselves in new cars. So in this case, you have indi individuals. Individuals are different from the party. The party is APC, which um, Buhari comes from. But these individuals are legislators. Part they they are in the party, but they are also legislators. So they fight for their own selfish interest and not for the interest of the people of Nigeria. That's the problem. Interesting. So the government of President Buhari, flanked by the vice president, is indeed fighting corruption, but the, the legislature and the judiciary are, are not letting him yes, fight Yes, exactly. Corruption. They are making it difficult. This is really interesting. L let's talk about the... Um, um, the fact that uh, you guys want the president, the vice president, to be president. Um, what base do you think the vice president has? Because to be the, a Nigerian president, you must be someone that um, resonates with every other part of the country. Don't forget, we're, we're also having the conversation about zoning, and many people are advocating for an Igbo president. Um, do you think that the vice president does stand a chance against all of these other people, especially the people in the southeast who are asking for fair representation? Um, well, the APC has brought out their zoning, zoning um, calendar, and actually the presidency is zoned to the southwest. So I'm from southeast, but unfortunately it's not our turn yet. So I'm clamoring... How so? Where did you get this information from, that it's not your turn yet? But when has it been the turn of the southeast? This time around is the turn of the south, southwest. No, where, where, based where, on where APC, is it written that APC it's the zoning. turn? It will be the turn of the southwest at, or southeast at some point. Southeast. It's not your turn for southeast. How do you so know it's, this? It's, where did you get this information from? It's not the turn for the southeast because it's online. The zoning, the APC have zoned different. Oh, so this is according to the APC. It's not yes, the, the turn APC, of the southeast. APC. That's what I was trying to get. This, the APC, the zoning for the APC, the presidency goes to the southwest. I see. Yes. So the South is I'm from South East. It's not the turn for the South East. When is yet. it going to be the turn of the South? Oh, that is determined by the party. <laughs> I'm not I'm not partisan, so it's determined by so the party. So you do not support the South East agitation for fair participation in the presidential zoning? Well, I'm do you know is there a candidate? <laughs> you tell me. Well, if there is a viable candidate for us, what we have seen, we're not going by sentiments. As Citizens United, we are not moved by sentiments. We are moved by qualities. What does this person represent? So even if you're from South So you're East, telling me that in the whole of the Southeast, there is nobody who possesses a quality for a president, presidential enough to lead this country. This is what you're saying. As person, Citizens Unite. The person we have seen as Citizens Unite is Professor Yemi Oshibajo. 
that is the person we are endorsing. We have looked all around, and the person we are endorsing is Professor Yemi Ushibaju. That's the person we are endorsing. That's the person we think can move Nigeria to where we need to be. How do you hope to get other young people? Because I see that you guys are a group of young people. Yeah. How do you intend to get a lot more young people to jump on this bandwagon? And judging from what happened in October of 2020, the fact that those people, uh, the people that were hit at the toll gate, have not necessarily gotten justice. How do you hope to, um, one way or the other, appeal to uh, the, the, the young people who are still aggrieved as to how the federal government deals with that oh, issue? Oh, we want to give them a voice. That's why we created an, an app, PYO app. It's with on the, iOS. With the man who is in the government that has failed to recognize that these people needed justice. The government that, in the first instance, made these young people hit the streets to protest for bad governance. How do you hope to do that? No, it wasn't a protest for bad governance. Oh, yes, it, it did. It met him a force. It started as police. Let me educate you. It started as. Hold on. Yes. It started as a, a protest against a rogue police unit, yes. um, against police brutality. And then, of course, it met him a force into end bad governance because if we had good governance, we would not have a rogue police unit killing young people. So, again, how do you intend to send this message home to these young how people? How do you end bad governance for a president who was democratically elected? You're trying, are you trying? Are they trying? Are we trying to turn us into a military era? So the, a, a president was Who's democratically they? a president was democratically elected, and if you don't want him, ending bad governance time, doesn't mean that you want to overthrow a government. No, should I educate you no, on when, what bad governance no, means? I, bad so, leadership. Some of the placard said um resign do this and what you want to but do that's if a you democracy want to end people have a right to do that don't they have a right they do, to do that but if you want to end bad governance in a democratically um standing state in the democratically elected president all you have to do is use your thumbs when is a 2023 that's why we are clamoring when it's 2023 if you feel that the president Yemil Shibajo, we are praying that he comes out and then he wants to be the president for 2023 if you feel he's not he's not it for you use your thumbs so if you feel someone else is it, use your thumbs. But before then, how do you get people? Because you want him. You're clamoring for we him to come. We are clamoring for him. So if he does come, how do you get young people to back him? That's why I said. To we, have, we have an app. We created an app. It's called PAYO app. It's on Apple Store. It's on and Google Play Store. So what we want to do is give young people a voice. So how we about want those to who are not tech savvy? It's not every young person. The guys who were looting... Um, uh, who took over that protest and you know made it become something else? Those people don't oh, have statistics. access to apps. Those are the people who actually go out on election day to vote, statistics. compared to the people in the second statistics class prove. who do not necessarily come out to vote. Statistics so how do you appeal to those people? Seventy percent of young people in Nigeria have smartphones. Yes. So we have done the statistics. We have done our research. We have done our findings. Smartphones. Yes, smartphones. Or telephones. Smartphones, not telephones, smartphones. So we've done our findings, we've done our statistics. Um, if you, I don't know if you're on TikTok. All 70%. you just have to do. Yes, 70%. I'd, like to, see, to, I'd, I'd just, like to see that poll. Yes, I'll share with you after now. All you have to do is click on the hashtag Nigerian TikTok, and you see a lot of people on TikTok, a lot of Nigerians, young Nigerians, using TikTok. So that's, those, And those, those Nigerians are, the, are 70% of the Nigerians. No, not only that, not only TikTok, a lot. Um, for instance, a lot of people use WhatsApp. This is 70 TikTok is not only what you use on smartphones. You have WhatsApp, you have Opera Mini. There are a lot of um, applications that you have on your smartphones, not only TikTok. So in this case, we've done our research, 70%, and these are the people we want to reach. So on the app, you can have a one-on-one -on -one with the vice president. We hope that you have a one -on -one. You can share your questions, whatever burden you have for the nation, or whatever questions you feel that he should answer. We'll, put, we'll post it there, or you can send a video of yourself, and then we'll ensure that those videos get to him and then he gets to answer those your questions we also intend to hold virtual town halls on the mobile app as well as create um the digital rally using the mobile app so we want to we want to take things differently we want to do things differently because we are young we are the youth and um the next generation is online so that's what we are Violet Anirabi is a member of Citizens Unite, and I want to say thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we discuss women. Yes, it's International Women's Day. And how can we break the bias against the women folks? Stay with us. <laughs>